so happy, but don't worry. This is like just just getting your feet wet, okay? So you don't have to do any of this in your paper or anything like that. This is just getting your feet wet. So um, uh, scales of measurement. You've seen this before, right? I'm just gonna put this up here. For the four category methods. So you've seen this before. Uh, nominal means just categories. You know, you're a Detroit Lion fan, you're a, a New England Patriot fan. There's no ranking per se, although some people might say, oh, okay, Patriots are number one, Lions are number 25. I don't know, whatever. Uh, I think you're doing better though. Okay, so so nominal categories, ordinal, now you start ranking, right? But with nominal, going back to nominal. If you have categories, the types of analyses that you might be able to use in those situations, I've kind of listed them for you. You might look at the mode, the most frequently occurring score, to give you information about the data. Um, that doesn't give you too much, but it still may give you something. Uh, you might do a chi-square analysis, and that's possible when you have categorical um, information right, with both variables. Okay? Ordinal, this is, again, categories, but now we're ranking people like the A group, the B group, the C group, the D group, the, the flunking group, nobody's flunking in here, everybody's going to do well. Uh, so we, with rank, ranking, now we can talk about the median, the point that divides the, the, the lower half from the upper half of folks. And we can also talk about the mode as well. We can talk about correlations, and, and there's a specific Spearman row correlation that we use with, with ordinal data. And we, we can talk about uh, non parametric analysis of variance. And basically, when we say non parametric versus parametric, parametric assumes that there's a normal curve. Right? If we say non parametric, we can't make that assumption. It may be skewed in one direction or another direction. Too many A's on the test. Almost everybody got an A. Almost everybody flunked. There's no bell curve where there's a whole bunch of people in the middle and some A's over here or a few failing grades over here. When we get to integral data, we can do a lot more things. We can look at the mean. That's a big one. Mean, standard deviation, correlation of Pearson product moment correlation. We'll talk about that. Okay. That's the one we use here. Regression, types of analysis, and analysis of variance and factor analysis. Just about everything else we can kind of throw at the data in terms of analysis. And ratio, you know, it's, again, people debate whether this actually exists. Uh, but we still list it because some people say it, it does exist. We, do, we, we can, in some cases, have a known zero. It's basically the same types of analysis uh, that are used for interval data. So that just gives you kind of a breakdown. Whether that means anything to you or not is another thing to that just kind of gives you a breakdown. Okay, so this started out really easy. Uh, you guys know the mean. You find the average of the scores. So you take, like this is uh, how many people here? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten people had maybe quit a quiz at ten points. Somebody had a one on it. Somebody had a nine. We just aced it. Uh, so we add them all up. Your scores all up. And to find the mean, you get the sum of x, and you divide by how many in the sample. Ten people in the sample. The sum of x. You add them all up. Fifty-two. 52 divided by 10. Yes, right? 5.2. Right. So the mean here is 5. How about this one? That's this one. Easier still. No big deal, right? Sometimes, sometimes you, you'll see data listed this way. F refers to frequency. So th what this is saying is that uh, we had one score of 2. Oh look, right here, one score of two. We got four scores of three. One, two, three, four. 
We had uh, two scores of six. One, two. See what I did? That's all I'm doing. One score is seven. One score is eight. One score is nine. And so you might see it distributed this way. And so then you, your formula is the sum of f times x divided by n. So f times x, frequency of 1 times 2 is 2. 4 times 3 is 12, right? 3, 6, 9, 12, right? And so forth. And then you get a total, which will end up being the same as over here, 50. And 50 divided by 10 is 5. Right? No big deal. Easy stuff. Now, uh, the most frequently occurring score. Six. Six. six and There's three. There's three sixes. And three. And three threes. So we would call this bimodal of three and six. Most frequently occurring score. Three. Three. Is three. Three. Because there's four scores of three. Now the mode. Uh, or the median, I should say, where you divide the point that divides the, you know, the, uh, the, the lower half and the upper half. You basically start at 1 and 9, you go to 3 and 8, you kind of just with your fingers, it's, it's, it's easy to do. <laughs> that middle point. Well, the middle point between two sixes is 6. Right. And you just get the average. 6 plus 6 divided by 6 is, or is divided by 2 is 6. So here, what's what's the point that divides or four and a half? Nine, you add these two together, six plus three is nine, divide by two. Oh yeah. Okay. And and just real quickly, you don't have to memorize any of this stuff, there's aren't you glad we don't have a test? <laughs> no. <laughs> Validity basically does it measure what it was set out to measure? Does this intelligence measure intelligence? Yeah. That 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 uh, celebrity thing. <laughs> I just when I when I was looking over my notes, I actually came up with a joke so you can humor me. In this. Oh, no. the, the the celebrity thing had had no face validity. I don't get it. Face. Pictures of the faces. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no face validity. It logically doesn't make any sense <laughs> to use that as intelligence. Okay. Okay. Uh, so really, face validity is you look at something and you say, hey, logically, that does look like it measures what it's supposed to measure. Content, you know, you're, you're kind of looking at the questions, and if you're trying to assess math, is it really measuring math? Or reading comprehension. You know, some math tests are really measuring more reading comprehension than math ability. So, you know, sometimes you get experts to look at your question and it makes it stronger in terms of content validity. Criterion related validity. Basically, you compare it to something that either exists or something that predicts something in the future. For example, if I created an IQ test, like my face thing, Right? And I wanted to see if it was a good IQ test, I would compare it to a test that exists out there right now. And I would see, does, do, do they correlate well together? If they do, then, then, then it has concurrent criterion-related validity. Now, sometimes you can't compare something uh, to something that doesn't exist. Uh, you know, uh, if I wanted to, you know, if the GRE didn't exist, let's just say it didn't exist, graduate record exam, what's that supposed to tell us anyway? You can, if you're smart enough to be in the graduate school. Yeah. Does it do a good job? No. No. <laughs> okay. Okay, we all agree on that one. Okay. Oh. And that one now. Okay. <laughs> all, right. all right. All right. So if it didn't exist, I would. I would, and I wanted to create something that was supposed to tell me if you would do well in graduate school. I, I, I created, 
then let you into graduate school, take the test, let you into graduate school, see how you did it in graduate school, compare it to your score. You know, the people who did poorly on the test should do poorly in graduate school. People who do well on the test should do well in graduate school. And we find that sometimes you, you just get into graduate school and you're gonna, your motivation is high, you're probably going to do okay. Despite the test. Despite the test results. Construct validity is, you're looking at defining a construct, like intelligence. What is intelligence? People can define it in, in, in a million different ways. I mean, how would you, how, how do you define intelligence? What is intelligence? Is it book smarts? We don't have a book in this class, right? That's one domain. Darn. Yeah, it could be, right? There's a lot of them. What else could intelligence be? Just throw something at you. Smarts. Street smarts. Common sense smarts. Right? Problem solving smarts. Right? Creative smarts. You know? Social smarts. Emotional smarts. Uh, you have multiple intelligence. So you, you, you have to see, can you, can you operate on, can you define it, and then can you measure it? So those are some of the different types of validity that exist. Then we look at reliability. You know, not only uh, validity, does it measure what it's supposed to measure, but does it do it consistently? That's reliability. You know, so I take an intelligence test today, I take it two weeks from now, and I get about the same score. So that's, that's pretty reliable. That's good. Um, if I go down here and I look at this question, you know, this is where you might run into reliability problems. Now, read that question. Have you ever had any unusual perceptual experiences? Well, today I might say no. Yeah, no. And then maybe four weeks down the road I might read that question and I say, you know, when I had the flu years ago, I had some unusual... So I'll say yes. And that doesn't have reliability, because I can interpret it differently, depending on what I'm thinking about. That's where you kind of run into problems with, with reliability. Is this ambiguous? Is it clear-cut? No. It usually contributes to internal consistency, reliability, and so forth. So you have different ways of measuring reliability. You can Take a test, take it two weeks later, and compare the results. If it's consistent, that's probably a reliable test. Uh, you can take alternate forms, so you create two, two almost identical tests. I mean, slightly different worded, but bas basically going for the same concepts. You compare them, get the same scores, you know, good correlation, it's probably reliable. Split half, odd even. The odd items go into one test. Even ones go into another test, same person takes both tests, they get about the same score, you know, good reliability. And then you look at internal consistency. There's things that you can do to kind of examine if the questions are kind of, they're paralleling each other, and there's some good, good internal consistency. This is what you want in a test. Validity as well as reliability. And that's important if you decide to create a test for your dissertation, if you go down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't that a cool picture? Mm. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. You know, I, I, I was looking, I typed in a search for bell curve and looked for images, and this popped up, and I said, oh, I gotta, I gotta use that. Bell curve, okay. So, so a bell curve, again, that normal distribution, you can have what they call kurtosis. You know, it does, is there a whole bunch of people that are in the middle, and that, so that, that peak, it goes way up. You know, um, and, and it balanced and, and platy, cryptic, like the platypus, right? Mm -hmm. and the little kind of beaver looking, like the, what do you call it? Like a beak? You've seen duck, that? Duck bill platypus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is cute, isn't it? A cute little animal. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, there are different names you can give it. Uh, when you get into skewing, this is, this is basically everybody got A's on a quiz. 
every single person got 100% of the quiz, that would be skewed to the left. Skewed to the right, everybody failed the thing, and, and more normal. And yeah, it's most people scoring average and some A's and some failures. Okay. So this is a bell curve, sometimes it's called a, a Gaussian curve. Uh, it can be normal or skewed. Um, parametric, we mentioned that before, assumes a bell curve, a normal distribution, non-parametric. Makes no such assumption. Right. We have a concept called descriptive statistics and inferential. So if I'm doing descriptive stats, I'm just describing what I see. What do you see? Don't interpret anything, just tell me what you see. I would a cat. A cat? <laughs> and books. A ton of books. What else about the cat? Though? You the tell cat's me a little more about the cat. It's it, it, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's the color. Black, 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 black white, right? You tell me that, right? There's white whiskers. And white whiskers. Mm -hmm. What's the green on it? And, and 1.5 centimeters of its foot is hanging off of the edge <laughs> of the banister. <laughs> what about, now, that's a little inferential. We don't know exactly how far. We don't have a little. Let's measure. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait, you can't measure. It's just what you see. Yeah, so that's a yes. guess. That would be more influential. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but you said the foot is hanging off the edge. Yes. So sure. Yes. You know the data about that, right? Mm -hmm. And you can say there's what? And if you count them, I think there's With the 21 or 22 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, we can't really read the title. So books are going from biggest to small. In general, yes. Biggest or, or widest, maybe. Because here's, here's a, let's see, this one's thicker than this one here. But it is smaller or not as wide as this one. But this one's wider than this one. Or it looks about, yeah, I think that a little wider than that one. So, but, but in general, bigger the, the smaller. The cat's the eyes are green, and its mm -hmm. tail is moving in the shape of a C. <laughs> it looks like a yeah. yeah. It's like <laughs> a snake. Yeah, that's, that's more interpreting. Yeah, we have to go there. Uh, now, if we want to go inferential, well, there's one more thing we can say. There seems to be, they're either on a table or on a piece of wood on the floor. I don't know. What would you guys say? A reflective surface. Yeah. So that's probably the floor. Good point. That's good. Okay, now, inferential. We could say cats like to read. <laughs> He's a smart cat. Smart yeah. cat. Uh, this, the person who owns this place, likes books and cats. That may or may not be true, but we could make those inferences. Uh, or we could say, the person likes to be thought of as being a voracious reader. That maybe likes to look smart to other people who come visit and come visit his or her house. Somebody's treating a cat for books. <laughs> could, yeah. Somebody's fed the cat too much. Yeah. Or, or some people might say, not enough. Not enough. I, I, I saw a clip of a very fat cat. And have you seen those videos on YouTube? Yeah. Mm. That's a shame. It is. They're shortening their lives. All right. Now, if this was a, uh, a tortoise shell cat, what could we infer? A tortoise shell. shell, which means they have at least three, three different colors. Same with calico. Um, calico. What are we trying to figure out? Can we make an inference if, if it was tortoise shell? But it has three colors. But its yeah. parents were what was called? Like, or the person loves the variety of books, the variety of cats. Or we could say it's probably female, too. Because, yeah. Probably yeah. And how The tortoise shell. Almost always. Nice. 
that you're not doing statistical analysis. It's more of a qualitative research thing. Uh, but you still might use something that might look at the data in a systematic way. It's called N vivo. N, like the letter no, vivo. V-I-V-O. And it's just a way, what it does is you input information, you kind of look at a sentence, at a response, uh, uh, and you, you look at the response and you kind of give it a theme. That seems to center around uh, joy. Remember uh, uh, Brene Brown when she was talking about joy and, and wholeheartedness, and she'd look at responses and give it themes, and then she'd look. Oh, the majority of people here, the theme seems to be shame. Remember that? So that's more qualitative. But en vivo can help you find those themes. Instead of you having no cards all over the place, you know, oh, that looks like joy, that looks like shame, that looks like guilt, um, and then you, you, you or the program does it for you. Looks like the All right, so. So if I wanted to do a high square. Basically, you're, you're looking at ranks, and, and I use an example, military rank and, and GPA rank. And my ranking was good, not so good. 3.5 and above is good. I could use actual scores, that would be interval, but I wanted to change it to rank. Good, not so good. Does that make sense? You can take interval data and you can make ranks. Does that make sense? You can do that. For example, if I go back to way back here, I could have 
you know, instead of taking the actual scores of these people, I could say, this person did the worst, you know, number 10 on the list, and uh, these three people tied for, you know, I could, I could rank them for the next worst, and so forth. But, but you know, usually you want to take it as high up as you possibly can. If you have scores, you can score So, so I have two groups, enlisted and officers. And that's kind of ranked in the sense that usually officers have more education than enlisted. So they can, they can get into the higher positions, more education. So they're kind of ranked. And then I can look at GPAs and put in that sort of If I do a comparison of the data, in order to find my critical values, remember that phrase, critical values? I gotta go through the chart to find my critical values. I need degrees of freedom when I go to a chart. For chi square, how I find my degrees of freedom? I'm gonna take the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. For each type of analysis, you can figure out what your degrees of freedom are based upon. What they, what they indicate is how you figure out the degrees of freedom, their formula. So in this case, this is how you can figure your degrees of freedom. I have basically two rows, one, two, uh, I mean two columns and two rows, right? So two minus one is one, times two minus one is one, so one times one is one, one degree of freedom. So I go to a chart, in order to use a chart, though, I also need to know my confidence interval. How confident do I want to be with this process? Remember we, used, we said 95% is the one we almost always go for. So I go to the 0.05 column, which represents 95% confidence. I have one degree of freedom, 0.05, find in the chart, it says my critical values are 3.8 or 41. So you can round it out to 3.8. Eight four. So here's zero. Here's three point eight four. Three minus three point eight four. Then I use my formula to calculate my chi square value, and let's say it comes out to be nine point six eight. So do I reject my null or keep my null? Do you remember that part? What what area does it have to fall into to be rejected? Here, here's. The critical value, here's 9.68. I these are the areas of rejection. Right? Mm -hmm. So it falls out here. So I'm rejecting my null. And my null would say there's no relationship between your rank as a as a soldier and your your GPA, your rank there. There's no relationship. I'm rejecting that and I'm saying there is a relationship. Doggone it, there is. Okay? So the null and the hypothesis? So you can yeah, you always look at the null and whether it's rejected or accepted. Before you create your hypothesis. Oh, well, you create your hypothesis, but when you do, the, you have to have a null because it's a null that you either reject or accept. So you have to think of it. So you can have a hypothesis that says there is no. You, you, well, usually when you're. Your experimental hypothesis is saying there is some sort of relationship. Okay. And the null is the opposite. There is none. Okay. Yeah. There's nothing going on. Null, nothing. And, got it? Null, nothing. <laughs> All right. So now, now, this is good if I can use chi-square if the ratio of subjects to cells is greater than 5. How many subjects do I have? Altogether. 50. How many, 50 people, right? How many cells do I have? Cells? Four. One, two, three, four. Four cells. 50 divided by four is what? 12.5. 12. 12.5. 12. <laughs> 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 yeah. 12.5. Did you look or did you just. Uh, well, uh, yeah, no, I didn't. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. 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 Ye
six times the sum of the distance between the two variables uh, squared divided by n, the number in the sample, times n squared minus 1. Oh, it's simple. So, so you, here's here's five people who took a test, two different tests. One was on um, intelligence, and one was on creativity. We'll just say creativity and intelligence. <clears throat> and and so person number one got one on the intelligence test and really high on. <coughs> this last person, opposite. <coughs> so we're trying to figure out what what is you know, and this is actually not scores. I'm sorry, these are ranks. This person did the worst, or actually maybe the best. Number one, they were number one. <coughs> so we'll say they did the best. This person did the worst on this test, but it was inverse on the other test. They did the best on this one, worst on that. One. So, um, so now we're looking at the distance between six times the sum of the distance between them and the square root. So we have a decom. So the difference between these two figures, 1 minus 5 is minus 4, square root, 16. See what I did? 4 minus 3 is 1, square root, it's 1. 2 minus 4 is minus 2, square root, positive 4. 3 minus 3 is 0, square root, no. 5 minus 1 is, um, that should be 4. Ooh, typo. Ready. 5 minus 1 should be positive 4, square root 16. Doesn't much matter because when you square it, it all becomes positive. But that is one. So the sum of d squared is this column right here. d squared, which is 37. So I have 1 minus 6 times 37 divided by 5 people, 5 in the sample, times 5 squared, 25 minus 1, which becomes 24. So 6 times 37 is 222. 5 times 24 is 120. 222 divided by 120 is 1.85. 1 minus 1.85 is minus 0.85. What is that telling me, though? In the end, what does that tell me about not, not, intelligence not, uh, and creativity? Not, uh, not, uh, they're, 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 they're not, uh, very small. And you can see, well, it actually is, a, remember, plus or minus 1 is a strong it's relationship. It's a strong, inverse. if it's zero, no relationship. Uh, no, no. So it's a strong inverse relationship. And that makes sense when you look at it, right? Yes. As one goes up, the other kind of goes down. That makes sense? Inverse. Yeah. How did they come at that point? Did they work backwards? Yeah. Very good. Uh, however, you did it at I don't care to know, all I know is the formula. <laughs> And now you don't even need to just plug the data in, you press a button, you can get it easier. I like this. Uh, sometimes you get an outlier, you know, that, that kind of really skews your, your correlation. Sometimes you throw that outlier out and you find, you know, this was like an anomaly. So they, they just didn't fit the pattern, so you kind of throw them out. Uh, it's an outlier. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you can go in places and and you can find uh, uh, calculators on the internet. You, know, you can just do a search of experiment correlation coefficient calculator. You plug the data in, it only three, you plug the data in, you get the correlation. Okay, here, here we've seen this before. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay, go back. We've seen this before, so. Come on, bye. Bye. Uh, there we go. <laughs> That's our. our I never get tired of it. Okay. 
I just want to go see. I wish I had a baby version. <laughs> we have one, <laughs> but we should have two. <laughs> we have one. <laughs> we gotta have two. This guy, this guy must be a church. Yeah. They're, they're so mellow. Versions are so mellow. Uh, okay, Pearson. There is the formula. That's just one, one of two formulas. Oh my that's, God. Wait, but the, and that's one that you used on the first day. On yeah, the now that's the one that did this one. But too. on the computer, with the one. Yeah, the, 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 the calculator. That's what that's what it did when we stuck the numbers in. It did that for me, for us. But if you wanted to do it by hand, you would need <laughs> at the top. Of, I can't reach it. But you'd need a sum of x y column. This column. You need a sum of x, x column and y, a sum of y column, x squared and y squared, and you need a sum of x squared and a sum of x uh, y squared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't have to go through this, right? To get no. Through. This is actually easier than the other one. Yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad. What, what What's that telling you, though? I should ask you that. It's a positive. As one goes up, the other goes up. A positive. Yeah. Maybe it's a cat. Maybe it's a cat. 
Maybe it is a bat. Yeah. Some kind of a there, science there experiment gone like wrong. There are dozens. <laughs> Photoshop. That's that's probably um, yes, a fruit bat or something. That is okay. abomination. <laughs> but that would be interval and artificial dichotomy. That would be bicerebral correlation. And the five coefficient is when you have two dichotomies. It doesn't matter what kind. True. Artificial. At least two dichotomies. Okay. Blow your mind a little bit more. Okay. When, when you're looking at two groups of means, you're comparing two means. It's a t test. Remember when I, I was doing my uh, plagiarism study and I wanted to compare the mean of religious university word lists? Remember that? And the mean of, of uh, non religious university word lists? And I found no significant difference between the means. I was using a t test. You can, you can also use a one-way ANOVA, because with a one-way ANOVA, you're comparing uh, means, two means. Yeah. But with a one-way ANOVA, you can do, let's say you have, uh, um, let's, say, let's say my study, I was looking at plagiarism, and I decided I wanted to look at plagiarism compared uh, geography-wise mm -hmm. plagiarism. So I'd, I'd look at the, um, the western <coughs> states, right, um, southern, um, midwestern, right, uh, eastern, uh, central, right, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Now, one way I know it could go, I could compare these two, these two, these two, these two, these two. All, all these can be run at the same time. And it'll tell me if there's any significant relationship between any of those two names. So I could do, I could do a bunch of t-tests individually, right? I could do a t-test here, I could do a t-test here, a t-test here. Or I could do a one-way ANOVA and do it all in one shot. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We'll do it for them. And ANOVA is just an acronym for analysis of variance. Analysis of variance, I'm sorry. Uh, a one-sample t-test is basically you know the population mean. Like height. We know the U.S. population mean for males in terms of height. We know it's five foot ten, seventy inches. So I can compare my sample to the known me. That would be a one sample t test. We could have two independent sample t tests. So I could take a group. Maybe I, I take a group mean of intelligence with just the females in the class and the males in the class. Notice there are even different numbers. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, if you include me, females, one, two, three, males. With independent means, I can compare. Uh, pair t tests. Now you get, you know, basically you're, you know, one person takes two different tests, and, and you got maybe ten people who take two different tests, and you're comparing the two testing. That would be paired. Does that make? That makes sense. Here, Ma yeah. takes a chocolate lover's tea, uh, test <laughs> and uh, a shoe test, and you can yeah, see. And then <laughs> Deb takes a restaurant test. She's good at asking waitresses good questions. <laughs> good questions test, right? Here, so here to. F test it, it is it's basically instead of comparing two means, I may be comparing more several means at the same time. 
getting more confident. And one way to know that, remember, you know, put on the brain and stuff. One way to know that you've got one category, that's your independent variable. And you're, you've got your dependent variables, kind of scores. So an example, here's an example, right in red. Uh, one category could be teaching strategy. Right? Teaching strategy. And, and maybe I'm, I'm looking at just lecture. Lecture and small group activities. That's my second of one category. And a third of one category would be lecture, small group activities, and whole group activities. And I compare that to your staff. Fine. Which you have. So I have one class where it's all lecture, period, no activities. I have another class, lecture, small group, activity. I have another class, lecture, small group, activities, whole group, activity. And I see who does better in terms of staff, test, final, performance, right? Make sense? So we have a category. <coughs> It has two or more subcategories, basically. I have a teaching strategy, and I have one dependent variable that scores, that scores in the test. That's a one way. Two way, two categories. Okay. So I have teaching strategy. Okay, here it is. Same thing. Lecture only, lecture group, lecture group, lecture song, group, and class. And calculation strategy. You're using pen and pencil, no calculator. And you're doing the formulas. Uh, you're doing pen and pencil, the plus the calculator. You get a little calculator help. Or you're just using a SPS program, which does all the calculations for you. And, and I'm, I'm doing these comparisons with the teaching strategy, the calculation strategy that you use, and then the effect on your final score. For, you, know, you take a final your score. I see who does better. And maybe in this evaluation, you find that, well, what do you think? Who's going to do better? I've, I've not done the study, so anybody could be right. Who would do better? On, on the final the final test. Do you think maybe the last one of the first category? People who get lecture, small group activities, and whole class activities? Yes. In addition to people who use maybe the SPSS program? Do you think they'll do better on the final? Or do you think the last group in the first category, the same you know, the lecture, small group, and whole class, and people who, who actually did do the formulas all out by hand. Do you think they'll do this? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> We'd have to do the test and find out. It may be that people who actually do the formulas by hand, without a calculator, do better on the final than people who are using a... Uh, a statistical program. Or maybe the opposite. The teaching strategy in conjunction with the statistical program are the folks who need to do that. Does that make sense? So that's a two way, because I've got two categories and I'm comparing that to a dependent variable of test scores. This is a one way, because I have one category I'm comparing it to an interval test score. You know, if you're in the school of psych and you know, they get your feet wet, you start with a couple of research things. Yeah. I mean, can you see students are always doing, you know, go out there and do this. Mm -hmm. So they start with something like simple like Pearson. Yeah. And then Which we've been doing. Then simple. they graduate to uh -huh. T-test. T-test. We do means. And, then, and, and, they, uh, and they get good at that and they just keep... Keep, keep building on their skills. Eventually, you know, it's, it's, you know, 
eventually you'll get comfortable, you'll kind of know by just looking at a design, hey, this is what I should do. But it takes a little practice and kind of going over this stuff. You know. It's not like writing a bike. It's more complicated. It would be, it would, you know, it would be nice if someone made a flow chart like, okay, let's say... They have done that, but sometimes those flow charts are... Well, I mean, yeah, you know, if you want to do this and this many variables and this kind of compression. Yeah, but sometimes you can't figure out what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> True. Oh, man. But yeah, you're right. It would be wonderful if they could create a flowchart that actually makes sense to everybody who reads it. Uh, and COBA is what I did in my dissertation. So basically, you're kind of combining a novel with regression. Basically, you're looking at some categorical predictors. Yeah, I was predicting confidence, biofeedback confidence would have a result on biofeedback outcome. Right? But, but when you're doing ANCOBA, what you want to do is you're going to subject people to a treatment process. So it's important to have a pretest and a post -test. You want to know if the treatment had an impact on the outcome. Right? So you need a baseline. You know, need to know where they started. So if they rate their pain, frequency, intensity, they get the treatment, and then they rate it again. So whenever you hear pre-test, post-test, start thinking in COVID. When we get into re uh, regression, we're actually trying to predict something. So, you know, all the other stuff before, we're just looking at relationships. Now we're starting to predict. This causes we're getting into positive effect now. I'm getting regression. So, so if you're just looking at one interval predictor uh, and one interval outcome, you know, we're looking at scores because it's interval. So maybe your predictor is how you do on a math achievement test will will dictate how well you do on a stat test. See where I'm going? So you take a math test, you do really well on it, you're more likely to do better on a stat test. So I'm going to predict, I'm trying to predict. Multiple regression basically is, 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 is saying you've got more than one predictor. Okay. So I, I'm going to say, hey, I like to always get fun with this. I always go back to talk because that's my thing, right? Okay. So how you do on a math test, and how you do on a chocolate lover test is going to predict how well you do on the stat test. Totally agree. So, li uh, simple linear one to one, multiple more than one. Okay. We are almost there. <laughs> We can almost say we can almost reach it. Multivariate. You 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 want to look at more than one statistical variable at a time. Okay. So in this situation, you're gonna <coughs> you're gonna predict two or more outcomes. So so uh, I, I I might I, and you have maybe two or more predictors too. Multi, multi, two more predictors, two more outcomes. The other ones were, were either one on one or two or more on one. Here it's two or more on two or more, right? Does that make sense? So we up the ante on the outcomes. So, so basically, how you do like on a chocolate lover test and an algebra test will predict how you do on a, st a stat test and the back depression inventory. I know it's good, but I'm just giving you examples. And finally, factor analysis. This is basically, you're, you're, you're looking at something and you're trying to figure out, what do I see here? You know, so so I, I, might, I, might, I might have something to figure out. 
so, so I, uh, I do an analysis, and I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that what's coming out of my assessment process is that uh, you know, this group of people have low energy. Sorry. Okay. So this group of people have low energy. They have mood problems, decreased interest in things they normally enjoy doing. They have weight loss, insomnia. They have low self-worth. They're lethargic. They're having concentration problems. Can I call that one thing? Give me, give me a word that describes all those things. Oh, the depression. Yeah. Here we go. Factor analysis. Oh. We're looking at things. We're looking at ex explanations for things. And can you theme it into one thing? One thing that describes it. So I may find that in one study, I have a whole bunch of things that I can label depression, a whole bunch of things that I can label as joy, a whole bunch of things that I can label as anxiety. I'm trying to figure out what explains something. And this thing we call depression explains the majority of what's going on. Someone else could look at the same circles and Come up with a they could come up with a different word. It's like or 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 a different construct. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I'm not uh, asking. But but uh, if you know anything about the DSM four, you go and buy the DSM four. You can go depression. Yeah. So if I was uh oh, so let's yeah or or let's relax. We're okay. We made it. You know, uh, if I look at the sun, this is actually followed uh, down side Uh If I look at the words, uh, and I was doing a factor analysis on it, could I come up with a concept? Because of you, I have endured. Uh, because of you, long have I endured in my life the pain and sorrows from love arise. Then you came and redeemed me, my dear, my only hope in my darkest year. Because of you, I yearn year to be alive because of, of you till death and this realizing my heart I know there's a part of you. And as my heart, you'll know this is true. Because of you, I found happiness. That to you, I offer this love that is so blessed. Though indeed I may be a slave for loving you, so true. It matters not to me because everything is because of you. Fair and God. Yeah! Or they have the kind of personality. Or one word. Or friends. But they're not. That would work too. Do it to the person. I think it's a spy. Oh, the dog. That's funny. That's all. You okay? You, you haven't died yet. You're still alive. Your hearts are still pumping. <laughs> okay. What class do we get more of this in? Stab one. And stab two. two. A different kind of stab. This is. This is just getting your feet wet. No, no, but I mean. No, it's the same concept. No, no, not. No, but this is like research stats, right? I mean, oh. I'm talking about which actual class would you get this? Uh, is that what you guys are asking? Yeah, in a sense, you're going to get a lot of this in stat one and stat two. Stat one and stat two. Uh, no, no, I have to. Or, or if college you take, stats you're talking about. It's more graduate stats. No, there's a class, two classes here. Called, first one's called stats one, oh, okay. and that one's called stats two. And that's for graduate for school? Stat, stats one would be for EDS? Yes. And stats two, two is for a doctor. doctor. Yeah. Now you can you can actually split it off from stat two and take uh, more qualitative than quantitative. You know, it's up to you guys. You know, um, to answer a question of which is easier, it just depends. You know, you if Brene Brown. And a, can you imagine that had been being easy what she did? She had like I don't know six years. Of, of doing your research and thousands of data pieces, where she came up with her theory and wrote a book about it. And 
That doesn't sound easy to me, but you can do an easy qualitative study, and you can do an easy quantitative study. I think it's easier to do a quantitative study than it, a You know, it, it, it just depends. It, depends on, it just depends on your definition of easy. Yeah. You're a numbers person, aren't you? I don't, actually, I don't like quantitative research. I like qualitative research, but I can see the... I can see it being more easier because once you have numbers, then you just have, you don't even need to be a numbers person. You plug it into plug it in, number. get an answer. And it done. says you know it's significant, and it makes you a graph. Yeah. I know. And then when it when it when it puts those asterisks next to it, something that means it's significant. So you type the data in, you you look for the asterisks, you look for p is less than 0.05. So the, the chances that this is a coincidence or a mistake is less than five percent. You're good now, and you write it up. And you have to explain mm -hmm. that you know what, what there's a story there, and you have to you explain have to the decipher the, the story. But you do, do that with qualitative yeah. as well. Yeah. You can explain the story, make sense of, of the data. Well, once you take qualitative research and then make it numbers, don't you have to do that? Uh, with quantitative, you can use in vivo if you want to, and it, it will do some of this organization for you. It will look for themes, That's and it'll spit it out, but it won't be in number form, it'll be in theme form. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. do you, teach, you don't teach stats, do you? No, no. I just get your feedback. <laughs> and then for most of you, that's, that's plenty. <laughs> Let me ask you a personal question. Sure. Do you enjoy this? <laughs> um, I actually have caught the bug in terms of presenting and publishing and that sort of thing. But if you if you look at Dr. G's meeting, you will see hundreds and hundreds of publications, articles, books. I mean, this guy was published Who? by Noam. Shang Ho Ji, the chair of our department. He is very well known, especially in archaeological circles. And this guy's famous in the But he's a wonderful Mr. Pink. I cannot hold a candle for that guy. Yeah. I cannot. <laughs> I don't know of anybody on campus that can hold a candle for that guy. I don't know. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and that's, I mean, that's not a bold statement. I mean, it's just, yeah. just a fact. He is, I mean, his, his vitae is like, you know, I don't know, 20 pages. What's that now? 20 pages. What's it? With the publications and oh, okay. presentations and articles and books, and, you know, so if you want to learn about stats, you know you can sit at his feet. You'll learn a heck of a lot more than you learn from me. I just scratch the surface. That's it. <laughs> anyway. So he, uh, as, a, as, a, as a fair warning, a man who is a stat samurai. He yes. He is. He, he will take it Even seriously. He likes coffee more than he likes chocolate. <laughs> and we go around and around about that. I bring articles about how you know chocolate improves health and, and how caffeine hurts, you know, you know. And then, you know, of course if he finds something about caffeine helping him. You know. <laughs> but I mean we go back and forth on that. You anyway. take a class with him, it's, it's serious business then. Uh, yeah. You'll learn a lot. And and Jerry, you, you you've taken both those stats. Stats one, stats two, and, 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 and quant. You in stat one. And and quantitative methods. Yeah. yeah. You, you, when you took stat one, you were scared. I was scared to death. Yeah. Because it's I'm I understand. There's. No, no, no. But listen. No, there's there's story. there's two ways to to approach math. There's uh, numeric operations, and then there's um, conceptual. Conceptual. I'm good with the conceptual. I suck with the operation. Like, I look at those form formulas, he goes, and he I have a mild person. panic attack. I love those. <laughs> I love the formulas, I too. I love formulas, too. It's, it's mad. Now, I, I have to step back and say, okay, this is a puzzle. You break it down piece by piece, but my initial gut visceral reaction is a panic anxiety attack. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so stat one is more about... It's crunching numbers, crunching calculator, numbers. And, and a pencil. Yeah. Are you taught how to do that? Are you, or are you going in and they give you give you a formula and you're expected to just? He'll let you on the final. He'll let you um, keep a formula on a three by five card. So if you want to do the standard deviation, you write out the formula on a standard on a three by five card and you bring you bring it with you. So I got an A minus in the class. 
Yeah, so this, if, this if is I can get an A minus, who has math phobia? Yeah, I mean I'm serious. I, mean, I had no algebra. Like I, I grew up in a hick town in northwest Missouri. Is it uh, is a uh, A rating schools, a single A through four A. Mine was a one A. I had 50 people in my graduating class. I had basic arithmetic my freshman year of um, of high school. And then I was out of high school, so I got to college. I was a 23-year-old freshman, and I got placed in a bonehead math class, 099, the remedial math. I was good with fractions and metric system and things like that, but somebody used to tell me that negative 7 minus, or negative 5 minus negative 7 is positive 2, and I have no idea what the guy's talking about. You know, so that's that's probably the basis of my focus, because... And, and I knew, I knew, no, I knew, I knew too. Yeah. And don't tell him I told you this. He's so a pussy cat. If you take that class, you're probably going to have A or B. You'll be, you, you might be scared. But basically, you, you just have to, if you just go in, suit up, and just work, you're going to you're gonna walk out fine, you know? Yeah. And, and if, that's if, if you don't, you know, come to class, if you don't, just, you know, don't try, obviously. Stats too was a joy because it's about it's more conception. That is more mathematical and and compre comprehension and conceptualization. You just got to know what 0.65 is. You know when SPSS spits it out. Uh, you got to know what the numbers mean. So interpreting. Right? And it's interpreting a computer printout, is basically. And then you start trying to learn what chain does in a sleep. As there's there's well, a story. You know, there's, it's an onion, and you start peeling away the layers yeah. of that onion. It's like when, when I go into antique shop. You guys have your favorite activities, right? Your eyes get big, right? Mm -hmm. Me antique. Him talking stat. His eyes get big. I've had professors like that. You know, Dr. Future, bless his heart, love that guy. And Andrews, he could he could give you numbers. He said, take this number, divide by five point three six. And, and, and uh, add 10.34, and that'll be about da 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 da. And you're like calculator, and he's got the answer before you've got everything plugged in. In his head. And he, you know, his eyes light up when he's talking, man. You know, so 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 Dr. G's like that. Can, can I ask you guys two more questions? Yeah, sure. On the road. Um. <laughs> You have a good uh, recall when you were my age, right? Twenty-eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Short term. Did you? Not long term. <laughs> did yeah. you? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, were you? Did you picture yourself being as accomplished and, and, and educated as you are today? No idea. So it, it, my jury started with the military. If I had not taken that journey, I doubt if I would be. Because I want to, I want to do that. I want to do some some research and, and, and. You have done. It's just, see, yeah. <laughs> maybe down the road we we'll just keep on trying, huh? <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it can be just theoretical too. You just come up with a theory. You know, like the first thing I shared with you, chaos reward theory. There's no crunching numbers in that one. Remember. Mm -hmm. There was no numbers. It's just looking at previous research and kind of making circum a circumstantial case that, that this theory exists and explains some of why people gravitate to abusive relationships when they grew up in abusive relationships. I just look at what uh, some of you folk know around here. You know, I don't know much about Dr. G, but I know he's very accomplished. I mean, to have two uh, offices on the same campus, you know, he's he's doing things. Yes, he's definitely doing things. <laughs> and you guys, and so I think, man, I hope I, uh, <laughs> hope I keep learning so I can make a difference. You know, that, I never would have seen myself doing what I'm doing now, presenting, publishing. It, it, it's just a wonder to have things that you know. Cool. And as you guys start, you know, taking more stat, you got your feet wet. It's not hopefully as intimidating as you thought it would be. You get your feet wet. You take a couple more courses if you decide to go the dissertation route. And then down, you know, once you once you have a doctorate, you, you're you know, there's the possibility of opening up the door 
to, to teaching at a university level, and then, then some doors can open to, to publish, to present. And really, it's not hard to make the presentation circuit. You just, you know, yeah. I got, I got uh, you know, Eric and I. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we've got a presentation. And, and with every student who has been in the LPCC track, we we we've we've got a presentation, and, and um, some of us have publications too on top of that. Some students. I'm going to work up to submitting what we did for a publication. So. Well, I, I knew what your guys' answer would be, uh, but as someone who's green, per se. It's just so comforting to hear it, even though you know what you're going to hear. It, you just you just like to hear it because uh, it just gives you that reaffirmation that things are happening. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to be okay. Yeah. If you're heading in a dissertation direction, you're going to be okay.